Okay, so we will continue the discussion uh, on engine hardware and uh, we have seen uh, the types of engines, the type of uh, two stroke engine, four stroke engine and Wankel engine. And now we have also introduced a few keywords like piston, piston uh, rings, uh, cylinder, connecting rod, crankshaft, etc. Let us just enumerate these, uh, let us say, names which we have actually seen. Uh, piston assembly, piston rod uh, in, the, in the large engines which we have seen in the first lecture, that large engines also may have piston rod. Uh, then connecting rod assembly, crankshaft assembly, camshaft assembly uh, for timing, then exhaust and inlet valves also operation we have seen. And then of course, cylinder liner which is also the cylinder inside which the piston goes up and down. Then the block of the engine. And then of course, there are other systems in an IC engine, uh, typically like turbochargers, radiators or heat exchangers which are there to dissipate this heat. So, we will of course have, uh, as we go along, uh, we will talk more about it. Uh, then we have of course seen spark plugs uh, for ignition and we have noted that in petrol engines, a spark plug is needed, uh, while in a diesel engines, usually the compression itself uh, is, uh, is responsible for auto ignition. That means, uh, w when you compress, the temperature and pressure go uh, higher than uh, a particular limit at which there is auto ignition. So, the, so the, diesel, the diesel catches fire by itself just because it has been compressed at a certain pressure and certain temperature. Okay? And then there are also fuel injectors. That means, we have seen or we have noted that in a petrol engine, uh, the mixture comes, the, the mixture is actually put in. That means, the air fuel mixture is already homogenized and that is put in and we know that is done by a carburetor for example. So, we will study the design of the carburetor also in the later classes. Uh, in, in, in diesel engines, you usually have fuel injectors. So, we will be studying about fuel injectors also in, in modern cars, even petrol uh, cars have injection facility now and we will see in the later classes uh, why, uh, what are the limitations of a carburetor and why uh, the, the industry has shifted to, uh, let us say, petrol injection engines. So, there are several, mind you, this is not complete. There are several subsystems also in, in uh, an IC engine, in a running automobile, for example, or in a running generator set. There are several other, uh, let us say, supporting systems to operate the entire engine. Uh, there is uh, the engine management system. There is an electronic control and monitoring system. Uh, there is an exhaust gas monitoring system. There can be a catalytic converter which converts some unburnt fuel or carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide. So, I have just listed a few major parts and as we go along in the later part of the course, uh, we will also study about uh, catalytic converters, their importance, their types uh, and uh, which type of catalytic converter is required in which type of an engine uh, and things like this. How do you sense what is being burnt, how it is being burnt, how is the quality of the exhaust gas, how do you sense it? How do you test an engine? What are the main parameters of interest and what are the systems which are employed on, on let us say, automobiles or running engines uh, so that you can do the monitoring of that engine and try to see whether efficiencies are uh, being met and you are also meeting the standards in terms of uh, uh, engine emissions. So, there are several uh, features uh, and uh, let us say subsystems of an IC engine. Uh, uh, in this lecture, we will see some of them, okay? some, some basic, uh, let us say, uh, parts of what constitutes an IC engine. Okay? So, let us go ahead uh, and see, uh, I have just noted down, uh, you can see on the screen uh, some types of pistons. Okay? There are different types of pistons and as you have seen in the, in the previous classes, we have seen that uh, in the two-stroke engine, for example, when you saw the video of the two-stroke engine, you saw that the piston was of a different shape. It was like a different shape. You can see here, there are several different, there are flat heads. So, this is called as a piston head. The piston head is flat here in this case. There is some depressions which are being made in this piston head, you can see. There are also some projections, you can see here. There are also some very special designs, wherein you can see a sort of a chamber which has been made in the piston itself. Okay, here also you can see a small chamber which has been dug into uh, the piston itself. You can also see piston rings. So, in, the, in, in, in one of the lectures, we have seen that uh, why these rings are required. Okay, you can see here piston rings, couple of them, 
a few of them here piston rings you can also see piston rings here so this is a very typical piston construction uh, and you can also see the slot wherein the the bearing the bush will go inside where the connecting rod will be fitted okay so we will see the, the entire construction on the right you see a very large piston and as i said in the previous class uh, you also see the piston rod can you see the piston rod now this is a photograph inside a large marine ship okay and this piston has been taken out uh, okay for inspection okay so there are multiple cylinders as you can see multiple cylinders are there and one of the cylinders has been opened up and the piston has been taken out okay for inspection and you can see some piston rings a series of piston rings here and here you can also see some small telescopic pipes which are going here now these are these are you, you don't see them in small pistons here okay you don't see them in small pistons here these are very special let's say piston cooling mechanisms okay because as you have seen this piston is directly it it makes one part of the combustion chamber okay you have the cylinder liner on the on the sides of it on the top you have the valves and the combustion chamber and the bottom part of the combustion chamber is actually the piston head the piston head directly gets affected or it is directly uh, let's say witnessing the combustion inside so it undergoes a cyclic changes in pressure and temperature so sometimes the piston uh, the piston needs also cooling okay and you will we will see uh, in the later part of the course how engine cooling is is designed and how it is constructed so the piston also requires a lot of cooling uh, okay for its safe operation for the metallurgical operation for uh, redu reduction of the wear uh, for make uh, for uh, for improving the life uh, of this piston because this is part of the combustion chamber where actual burning is taking place and so you see uh, in large engines where it generates enormous amount of power it can generate for example one cylinder can generate nearly 2000 to 3000 uh, let's say bhp or hp of power okay so we will define these terms as we go along uh, so uh, 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 an enormous amount of power is generated and therefore the piston needs cooling and uh, you can also see that some cooling arrangement some water can flow inside this piston and it can cool it can cool this piston so that is also there and you can also see a longitudinal protrusion of of this particular uh, let's say piston this is called as a piston skirt this is called as a skirt of the piston and we will see why it is used especially in the context of two stroke engines okay what does it do uh, this what is the function of this uh, of of this skirt so you see the piston the piston rings and the connecting rod and it has been taken out from the cylinder of a large marine engine and you also see different shapes of these pistons so we will we will talk about it why these piston shapes are different right now for this lecture you just appreciate the fact that piston shapes are an integral part of the design of the engine okay and uh, we, we will see why what are these uh, let's say depressions for uh, as we move along okay then let us move on to the next part how do we assemble it so you see the assembly here okay you can see the complete assembly picture here so you see the piston the piston rings the piston rings are 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 put on on the slots which are made here you can see the slots here also you can see the piston rings the piston rings are of different shapes you can see the piston rings are of different shapes we will appreciate why they are like that they are of different types okay there are 1 2 3 and 4 piston rings in this particular piston then the connecting rod will go inside this piston from here okay and uh, when it goes in there is a bearing here you can see the bearing and this pin this is called as a gazen pin the gazen pin you can see the gazen pin assembly here you can clearly see the gazen pin assembly here the connecting rod has gone inside and then the gazen pin has been put in and two circlips two circlips have been put to lock the gazen pin inside the piston okay so this connecting rod is now connected to the piston okay and you can see there is a bearing on the top and then there is a bearing on the bottom now where does this bearing this bottom bearing this is a babbit bearing you can see these two halves of the bearings and after a particular let's say operation time these bearings need to be replaced to reduce the friction i was talking about the friction so what are the uh, what are the seats or what are the locations at which this friction is generated this friction is generated because there is a reciprocating motion 
these rings are now let's say touching the cylinder liner and as they go up and down there is a wear and tear which is occurring because this particular rings are touching the cylinder wall and they are preventing the leakages of the gas they are helping in increasing the efficiency of the engine okay and but the wear and tear takes place here there is a reciprocating friction which occurs at this piston rings then there is friction in the in in this particular bearing this is called as the top bearing or the small bearing of the connecting rod at the bottom there is a large bearing of the connecting rod uh, which which now goes into the crank shaft so you can see crank shaft here and this particular uh, thing will go inside this is on, on the right you see the the cross section of the piston okay you can see the cross section of the piston it is usually a cast aluminum casts uh, in in typical automobiles okay uh, pressure die casting and and then uh, this this connecting rod essentially goes here and there is a gusset pin which is put and a circlips are put at this location and this location uh, so as to uh, put this small bearing or the small end of the connecting rod goes inside the piston the large end of the connecting rod goes into this crank shaft so through this bearing you can also see small holes here okay these small holes are now put are are put in the connecting rod essentially for cooling purposes so you will see when we will study the 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 cooling and the lubrication oil circulation mechanisms because to reduce the friction we need lubricating oil uh, to come uh, into these passages and they essentially help in reduction of uh, the, the 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 friction okay so you see uh, the the piston the gusset pin the connecting rod and then this connecting rod is uh, is in two parts okay this connecting rod is in two parts Uh, this this part is the integral part of the connecting rod and then there is a small part here which essentially when the connecting rod goes uh, on the, uh, the 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 connecting rod goes on to the crank shaft okay uh, you can you can connect this bearing from this side and then lock the connecting rod uh, through these two bearings uh, uh, with the help of the connecting rod bolts so these there are two bolts here for example and you can so this is this when you open these bolts this part of the thing comes out and then you can raise the piston from the top and you can remove the piston and connecting rod assembly out of the system so here you can see uh, the 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 lower half is also uh, let's say connected these are, these are the connecting rod bolts by which the lower half has been shown uh, in the assembled position so to say and here you can see on the right uh, the picture of how this assembly goes inside the engine and you can see here the piston there is a small depression on the piston which we have talked about there is also small two depressions here to accommodate for the valves okay uh, there is a the, the the piston rings are here the connecting rod is here and you can see uh, there is also some lubricating oil lines there are also i i was telling you in the first lecture uh, we need to cool the entire assembly also uh, to increase the life span and you can see uh, in the engine uh, in the engine block Uh, there are some cooling water channels i will talk about it later in the lectures so there are cooling water channels which are cut and water flows through them and they cool this entire uh, let's say uh, uh, the engine assembly here uh, the, the block of the engine and the head of the engine here uh, and this this is the this is the gusset pin so to say uh, which is connecting uh, the connecting rod with the piston so so you have seen the piston assembly okay and uh, uh the the idea here is to make sure that this combustion chamber okay uh, uh is which is the system as far as our thermodynamic analysis is concerned this will be our system so this system uh, uh, when it goes through a cyclic thermodynamic process uh, the piston forms as i was telling you one part of the combustion chamber so this is the liner this is the liner of the of of the combustion chamber this is the spark plug and the piston forming one part of it so when it goes through so fresh charge is inducted which is of course at the atmospheric temperature usually uh, or it can be even made colder uh, under certain circumstances which we will see uh, and, and then this fresh charge is inducted and then it is compressed okay and during the compression the pressure and temperature of this particular area will uh, with this particular volume will go up and, and the piston is of course the piston head the piston head Uh, is subjected uh, to this high temperature high pressure conditions and then a combustion will start and this will essentially uh, generate work here which will push 
the expanding gases will push this piston downwards and in doing that we will get positive work. So, this is what is called as a piston assembly. So, I hope uh, you have understood what is a piston assembly and then in the next lectures uh, we will actually do, uh, we will actually take up other parts of the engine uh, uh, as a whole. Okay.